Ten years ago, Chloe Payne was a teenage runaway desperately trying to turn her life around. Fifteen years old, I was troubled. I'd just come from a pretty broken family. After spending time in juvenile detention, she was sent to a Perth-based Christian rehabilitation facility, the Esther Foundation. Um, I remember a lot of people talking to me about God and about Jesus, which is very new. I hadn't come from a family of, of religion. The 15-year-old would spend three years in Esther Foundation's care, but says she didn't get the mental health support she needed. Chloe's journals from her time there show a young person struggling with depression and anxiety. I don't agree with myself. I don't understand why I'm here. It's just confusing. It's hard to explain. It was very confronting and scary. We just needed mental health support. We didn't need to be told that we had demons inside of us. The Esther Foundation operated in houses like this in suburban Perth and promoted itself as a safe refuge for women escaping addiction and trauma. Inside, residents claim they were made to take part in prayer meetings and church services. I was pushed into a religious cultish lifestyle, um, told to pray my demons away. I was physically restrained. A decade on, now a mum with a young daughter, Chloe paints a dark picture of her time at the Esther Foundation. I remember being told to calm down, that I had demons inside me, and that they would pray for me for the demons to leave. The Esther Foundation's founder, Patricia Lovata, says the organisation was born out of her desire to help others. She started running the program in 1995, initially just as a house for women in need. And I've watched you at Esther and I see that you have a really big heart for people. It quickly grew as she galvanised volunteers and secured government grants and donations. In 2008, Ms Lovata was named WA's Australian of the Year for Community Service. Within years, the WA government invested millions in renovating and furnishing this old convent to lease to the foundation for a peppercorn rent. And in 2019, the Prime Minister paid a visit to announce a $4 million grant. Bye-bye. Lucy Laurenti went to Esther in 2018 to seek help for an eating disorder. I didn't receive any sort of therapy from any qualified psychologists or psychiatrists. Um, the people who were supposedly giving us therapy were just girls who had been through the program themselves. She says her treatment at the foundation left her with post-traumatic stress disorder. I think the scariest thing that she had done to me was doing the exorcisms at the church services that she would hold. Um, while she was apparently speaking in tongues, she would try and get us to fall backwards, yelling that we had demons or devil inside of us. It's like being possessed and I feel tormented every day and I want it to stop. I'm black all the time, just darkness. Chloe Payne says Patricia Lovata would berate and manipulate residents and they lived in fear of the Esther Foundation director. It shouldn't be like that. The, the director of a program where you are at to get mental health support, supposedly, you should not have those fears about them coming into the house. <laughs> 7.30 sought a response from Patricia Lovata, but she declined to comment. I had to follow her for two months, shadow her literally less than a metre away. Former resident Cara Phillips first made public allegations about her experience at the Esther Foundation at a storytelling event two years ago. I started to realise that there was abuse going on and situations that were in human rights abuses, it was a cult. In late 2019, Cara Phillips sent a letter to the Foundation's board outlining allegations of psychological and physical abuse. That same year, Patricia Lovata went on long service leave and then left the organisation entirely. In 2020, she wrote to the Foundation saying, 
I own the responsibilities of the mistakes and wrongs that were done on my watch. While Patricia Lovata has parted ways with the Esther Foundation, 7.30 can reveal she is now working at another Christian-based rehabilitation facility in Perth. Gosh, it makes me so very uncomfortable. It makes me so uncomfortable, especially to know that she's still working with people. <laughs> and she could be treating them how she treated myself and how she treated others. Patricia Lovata declined 7.30's request for an interview. The current Esther Foundation board has issued an unreserved apology and says it stands in support of any former resident who has suffered hurt or abuse. It's also calling for anyone with allegations of possible criminal behaviour to report them to police and says it will cooperate with any investigation. The WA government recently announced a parliamentary inquiry to investigate allegations made against the Esther Foundation. And report by the 1st of December 2022. The federal government's $4 million grant to the Esther Foundation, announced the year before the allegations surfaced, was over seven years. So far, it's received about half the money. The Department of Health told 730 the funding agreement includes specific requirements regarding working with vulnerable people and its compliance is being actively monitored. I thought how could a place that is abusing women every day be receiving this sort of money? No one's no one's doing their research here. If it didn't ensure that the program it was funding was being provided by qualified persons, that's a significant deficiency in, of the administrative process. Dr Catherine Williams is Research Director at the Centre for Public Integrity. The department needs to release the information around the process via which the Esther Foundation was granted money so that we can establish whether the requirements of the applicable legislative framework were met. In a statement, a spokesperson for the Department of Health said, the government is working with the organisation to ensure the objectives of the funding agreement are delivered. The former residents of Esther Foundation hope that sharing their stories leads to regulatory changes. Because currently anyone can start a rehab, do anything they want, have people living in their premises, and that's okay. And to me, that's a pretty big problem. Brings up a lot of emotions, which is why I'm really glad that this has started and a space is being held for us to speak because it's so important. But something still gotta change it. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.